Welcome, everyone. I'm Surya Sitaraman. I'm an engineer working on the OpenShift networking team at Red Hat. I'm also a contributor to the SIG Network Policy API working group. Welcome to our talk on the Admin Network Policy API. It's a new Kubernetes native API that is designed for comprehensive cluster-wide network security. Hello, everyone. My name is Nadia. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat OpenShift networking team. Hi, uh, my name is Jan, and I'm a senior software engineer at VMware, working on container networking and security. And my name is Andrew Stoikis. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat in the office of the CTO. Um, and we are all part of the Network Policy API subgroup to SIG Network. That subgroup is fully devoted to the future of upstream policy-based APIs. Um, today, there's a lot of downstream variants of policy-based APIs. We're trying to consolidate everyone um, to increase portability and kind of help the whole ecosystem. We additionally have a maintainer track talk on that subgroup tomorrow afternoon, so please come check us out. OK, so hopefully everyone heard the theme music as you were walking in. Um, we're really excited today um, to kind of go into a little Hogwarts story. Uh, who here knows what Harry Potter is? Hope to see a lot of hands. Who here would classify themselves as like a Harry Potter fan? Some good hands, some good hands. OK, awesome. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, so I forced everyone here to kind of go through the Harry Potter story, so uh, bear with us today. Um, for today, we're going to have a Hogwarts Kubernetes cluster. At the head of that Kubernetes cluster is going to be Albus Dumbledore, of course. So he's going to be our cluster admin. We're going to be telling this story from the bottom up from the perspective of the cluster admin. So just try to keep that in mind. It's going to be really important to remember throughout the entire story. Um, we also have some really important namespaces, right? So we have the Forbidden Forest namespace. Ooh, scary, right? We don't like it. Just remember that. Um, the professor's namespace. Obviously, that includes Professor McGonagall, who is an important developer. Now, they're a namespace with some developers, but those developers have slightly more rights than the rest of the developers, right? They're professors, so they're kind of important. Um, and of course, we have Gryffindor and Slytherin with our favorites, Harry and Draco. Um, this is what makes up the, Harry, the Hogwarts cluster, and it's going to be integral to the rest of our story. So let's hop into kind of ground zero. Today in Kubernetes, uh, the, the basic networking model is Every pod can talk to every pod, right? And I think most of, us, most of us are pretty familiar with this, but we wanted to start from ground zero. So here you can see Gryffindor namespace pods can always talk to Slytherin namespace pods. Everything is kosher. Um, by default, everything's allowed. So let's look at a little bit more complex case. Not that much more complex, right? Um, Harry doesn't love Draco. Harry's like, ah, Draco's a little evil. So we're going to block traffic from the Slytherin namespace. What do they use to do that? Today, they really only have one tool that's part of the core Kubernetes API, and that is network policy. Right? Most of us here know what network policy is. It's been around for a long time. It's a stable API. It was originally made explicitly and only for the application developer. And I want everyone here to remember that. Um, and it was also explicitly made to be namespaced. It was not cluster scoped, and it was only for the application developer. So one other funny thing I want you to no uh, note here is that when Harry creates it, it's a network policy in the Gryffindor namespace, it implicitly isolates the Gryffindor namespace from everything. On this slide, we're just seeing from Slytherin. But on the next side, we'll also see, oops, kind of accidentally, kind of not accidentally, we also block traffic from professors. But wait, shouldn't professors be allowed to talk to every student namespace? Um, this is kind of a problem. So let's look at that a little bit more. So now, what do professors do? Even if they really want to talk to student namespaces, they might try to use those existing tools that we have, right? Network policy. Uh, but that doesn't work very well. As you can see, even if professors try to write and allow in their namespace, that arrow is still red. Uh, we have some major problems. So this is where kind of the work we've been doing comes in. Um, we're moving away from the application developer role and looking at the cluster administrator role. And Nadia is going to kind of take us down that journey of some of the new stuff we've been working on. Thank you. So we've seen how professors tried to solve their problem th themselves. That didn't quite work. So now they go to cluster admin Dumbledore and ask for help. 
And actually, Dumbledore is able to help thanks to the new API called Admin Network Policy, which is created specifically for cluster administrators, and it lets you enforce security policies that can apply to multiple namespaces and that cannot be overridden by any other personas. So Dumbledore actually agrees that professors should be able to talk to all houses, and he creates a cluster scoped object admin network policy that explicitly allows that. And you can see the arrow is now turned green. But let's take a deeper look into how it works. So we have introduced three layers of precedence. They are evaluated top to bottom. And you can see that the first one is admin network policy. It is managed by cluster admins. And as soon as admin network policy has a decision on a connection, it will be applied and nothing else can change it. But if admin network policy didn't match your connection, then the network policy is the next layer that will be applied. It is managed by application developers and that will take effect. And you can see there is one more layer that is called baseline admin network policy. It is also managed by cluster admins and it is evaluated last. And we'll talk about that in more detail in just about a couple slides. Okay, so let's go back to our professors and see how it actually works. So you can see that admin network policy has the highest precedence, so it will be evaluated first. That means that when professors are trying to connect to the Gryffindor namespace, this connection will be matched by an admin network policy and the connection will be allowed. But for Slytherin namespace, it is a bit different because their connection to Gryffindor namespace is not matched by an admin network policy. That is why the Gryffindor namespace network policy actually applies, and that's why this connection is still denied. You can also see one more detail. It's a little field called priority and admin network policy object. And all it says is that different admin network policies are prioritized, and this field basically defines in which order admin network policies will be applied. So uh, let's take, keep this picture in mind, as Yang will show us a little demo on that. Thanks, Nadia. So um, as you look at you know, the admin now policy in its YAML form, uh, you can see that it is really kind of like similar to the current Kubernetes now policies. But there are some key uh, differences. Uh, we wanted the API to be explicit, first of all. And second of all, you know, we ha we see we're seeing some um, fields that are new to the admin now policy, which we highlighted here. Uh, first is a priority one. Um, the priority field actually signals the relative precedence of this admin network policy compared to the other ones. But admin network policy objects uh, in the cluster will always be evaluated before the namespace Kubernetes network policies. So that's why we can um, achieve something like strong allow that we're demo um, demonstrating here. And the second one is for the, um, the rules, which is in the ingress and egress section. There is a explicit action field that says, you know, I want this to be allowed or denied. And it actually comes really handy with the priority model so that you can do, you know, a deny rule underneath and then, you know, some allow rules um, on top of that, which we'll show later. But for, for the purpose of this demo first, uh, this is a strong allow story um, that is, which we just showcase here um, for the, uh, in this diagram. And we want to dive in to a pre-recorded live demo. Um, let's see if it works. So, so we're showing this on a cluster that's running Entria as a CNI. Um, Entria is an open source CNI based on OVS. And along with Oven Kubernetes are the two first implementers of this uh, admin network policy API. So you can sh see that you know um, in the cluster, we have Entria running as a CNI. And we are actually also showing you know, all the namespaces that are in the cluster, which includes the Forbidden Forest, the Gr uh, Gryffindor and Threshing Houses that we just seen, and the Professor namespace. Um, we wanted to, um, to make the demo a little bit easier to read. We wanted to, oh, sorry. Um, we are actually looking at the Gryffindor namespace, um, and there is actually the network policy that we just talked about, which says, uh, I don't want to allow any connection coming into me. And this network policy actually does that. It, as you can see, it allows 
nothing uh, as an ingress traffic, and it's applied in the Gryffindor namespace. So uh, for the purpose of demo, we're first of all exporting the IP of the Gryffindor uh, Harry Potter pod in the Gryffindor namespace, uh, which serves as you know our Harry Potter IP. And then um, to demonstrate you know the network policy effect, we can see that the Draco pod in the Slytherin namespace cannot actually connect to the Harry Potter IP because of the network policy that are in the Gryffindor namespace. Similarly, if we want to initiate a connection from the professor namespace to the Harry Potter IP, it will got denied uh, for the same reason because of the same network policy that's in place. Now, um, let's look at the admin network policy that I just showed you guys, um, which is uh, we have you know the Priority 11 admin network policy, which is applied to the two houses, and it has a strong allow rule that says the professors should always be able to talk to the houses. Now, if we do the good old kubectl apply of this policy, and then we try the connections again, now you will notice that the professors are now able to talk to Gryffindor because um, the admin network policy has a higher precedence and override the, um, the network policy implicit isolation behavior. On the other hand, um, Draco uh, will still not be able to connect to Harry Potter because of the network policy that Harry Potter has placed. So this is you know, the first part of our demo. And in addition to something like strong allow, oops, we also wanted to show another use case, uh, which is strong deny. This is a totally different storyline. Um, because we're now looking at the Forbidden Forest. As Andrew just mentioned, you know, um, Dumbledore comes in and say, Forbidden Forest is really dangerous, right? Like nobody should just be able to talk to Forbidden Forest. But people like, uh, like Draco and the professors, um, they are actually having their own now policies. They are trying to talk to the Forbidden Forest. So as an admin, how can I lock this down completely? Well, the answer is uh, a strong deny admin now policy. So um, right here, we have a admin now policy that's really like the one uh, we just showed before, with a slightly higher priority. But instead of allow rule, we have a deny rule for the egress. Uh, it's selecting every namespace in the cluster and basically says that nobody in the cluster should be able to talk to the Forbidden Forest. And we also has that uh, as a demo. Uh, so you guys can better understand how this works. Uh, we have the, oh, wait a second. Is it, can you guys see that all right? I think the resolution is a little bit low for that one. Go. Okay, cool. All right. Cool. So yeah, we have the same cluster as before. We have the four namespaces. Um, this time we're exporting actually the Forbidden Forest pod IP so that we can refer to it later easily. Um, then uh, we're actually looking at the admin now policy that I just showed, which is a strong de um, denial one. And it, as I said, it applies to all the namespaces, has a higher priority, which is you know, trying to deny people to talk to the Forbidden Forest. And as we you know, showed before, we wanted to do a kubectl apply for the policy so that we created in a cluster level. Ta -da -da. Okay, now it's created. Um, what it does now is that if you try to make a connection from Draco in a certain namespace to the Forbidden Forest IP, it will get denied. Uh, it, it because you know the admin now policy is taking into effect. Similarly, also like for the professor namespace, um, if you initiate a connection to the Forbidden Forest, it will also get denied because of the same admin now policy that's applied there. Um, the important part though is that we are actually also going to try to put a now policy in the professor namespace which basically says that as a professor, I wanted, or as an application developer, 
I want to put a network policy that actually allows myself to egress to the Forbidden Forest namespace. Well, this network policy has been already created in the professor namespace, and that's allowing egress traffic to the Forbidden Forest. But does it work? Let's find out. So we're having a connection from the professor namespace to the Forbidden Forest, and it's timing now. Because um, the admin network policy strong deny is actually taking effect before the network policy evaluation. So that's how, as a cluster admin or Dumbledore, you can ensure that you know if you have a strong DNI rule, it's always going to hit before um, any developer tries to do anything different. So that concludes my part of the demo. And I'll hand over to Nadia. Thank you, Yang. That was a nice demo. Uh, let's get back for a second from YAMLs to pictures. <laughs> that is what we've just seen on this demo. So we have a cluster wide deny everyone to the forbidden forest policy. No one can talk to the forbidden forest, even though they have their own allow network policies in the namespaces. But at some point, professors decide that they actually do want to go to the forbidden forest. Maybe they need to feed the giant spider or they have some other business there, who knows. But they go to Dumbledore again and say that, yeah, we want to decide by ourselves. And actually, Dumbledore thinks, yeah, professors should be an exception to this strong deny rule. I want to delegate this decision to them if they want to allow themselves to go to the Forbidden Forest or not. And that is now possible with a new pass action. What it does is it basically skips all the following admin network policy for the matched connection and jumps straight to the namespace network policy layer. So let's try to see what happens here. You can see that pass action admin network policy has higher priority than the deny one, so it will be applied first. And then when professors are trying to connect to the forbidden forest, pass action network admin network policy will be applied and the network policy in the professor's namespace will be actually the one that decides if the connection is allowed or not. So now you can see that professors can connect to the Forbidden Forest namespace because they have this allow network policy. It is again different for, for the Slytherin namespace because their connection to the Forbidden Forest is not matched by the pass admin network policy, but it is still matched by the deny one. So this connection will be denied without even looking into what Slytherin namespace has in it. Okay, now keep that picture in mind again as we go to Surya's demo. Thank you, Nadia. So like Nadia mentioned, we have a pass action and a normal traditional firewall usually allows you to do deny or allow. So the pass is our shiny new feature that is a part of this API. And this is that feature that lets admin network policy interact with the network policy. So this is exactly how you delegate to the network policies in your namespace. So this is how a sample YAML looks like of kind admin network policy. And here we are trying to pass all the egress traffic that's coming from our subject, the professors and going towards the Forbidden Forest. You can see that it's created at priority three, which means it's higher compared to the strong allow and deny admin network policies that Yang created on his cluster. And we can also see the explicit action pass, which is different from what you've seen before. So I know I'm the last to present, but I want to make sure everybody's with me here. So how many of you use network policies? Can we have? Cool, that's a lot of you. I'm happy to see that. So this is the one thing that lets your admin network policies interact with the network policies, right? So literally, if you figure out that your network policies are not working as expected, you might want to open a ticket to your cluster admin or Albus Dumbledore, right? Trying to figure out what's wrong. So let's look at the pass action demo that we have pre-recorded here. And like Yang mentioned, I'm going to show the demo on the OVN Kubernetes CNI cluster. So here we have a kind cluster with three nodes, one control plane and two worker nodes. We also have our OVN cube agents that are running on each node in our cluster. 
And then we have our demo pods, right? So these are the four namespaces that we've been coming back to again and again. So we have the Forbidden Forest namespace, which has the Forbidden Zero pod. We have the Gryffindor namespace with the Harry Potter pods. We have the Professor's namespace with the Minerva McGonagall pod. And then we have the Slytherin namespace with the Draco Malfoy pods. The ones that we care about in this storyline in the demo are the Professor's namespace, so this one right here, and the Forbidden Forest namespace right here. We also have a network policy that is defined in the professor's namespace, like we saw earlier. So this is namespace scoped. And this one is allowing all traffic to go to the Forbidden Forest. And this is, I'm just taking it from the same spot that Yang left in his demo. We also have the two admin network policies in our cluster at priority 11 and 5. So this is the strong allow and the strong deny cases. And I think you've already seen the strong deny YAML that looks exactly like that. So we have basically denied everybody in our cluster from being able to talk to the Forbidden Forest. So all the egress traffic is denied. So clearly, when Minerva McGonagall tries to talk to the Forbidden Forest, she gets a timeout. So this is where our Arbus Dumbledore comes in. And he says, OK, I want to delegate, right? So I want to create a pass action admin network policy at a higher priority, number three, which allows Mina and McGonagall to be able to talk to, well, not really talk to, but you know, to allow Mina and McGonagall's network policy to take effect. So the pass A and P that you see here is exactly the same thing that I showed on our slide deck. So let's go ahead and do a kipcuttle create of our pass action. Sorry, pass admin network policy. Let's also do a get admin network policy command to make sure it's created and that we have all our three AMPs in our cluster right here. And now when Minerva McGonagall tries to connect to the Forbidden Forest, you can clearly see that it passed, right? So it actually worked as in it was successful. The reason is because the network policy in the professor's namespace is what took effect here, not the strong deny, not the, uh, the it was actually the pass admin network policy which first took effect and then it actually delegated it to the network policy in the professor's namespace and that took effect, right? So that's two matches that happened there. So going back to our picture, so this is the same thing that Nadia explained, and this is exactly what you just saw in our demo right here. So we have the professors who tried to talk to the Forbidden Forest namespace. It worked seamlessly because we have a priority three pass action admin network policy that took higher priority compared to the deny admin network policy in our cluster, which was at priority five. So we keep coming back to this diagram because it is kind of important, and this is how the interaction works. So from the admin network policy layer, so let's say you have an admin network policy where you passed the traffic, which is what we saw in this demo. You fall down to the network policy layer, right? But let's say you have no admin network policies on your cluster, in which case there's nothing matching that layer, right? So then you evaluate the network policies anyway. So that's the two conditions for you to fall back to the next layer. And then if there are no network policies in your cluster, then you fall down to the third layer, which is the baseline admin network policy. So this is the second resource that we ship as part of the admin network policy API. It's also a new one. And one of the use cases and one of the main reasons why we shipped this API is for you as cluster administrators, or for Albus Dumbledore in this case, to be able to define default guardrails in your cluster. So maybe there are no admin network policies and network policies in your cluster. And maybe when you delegate stuff, it doesn't really hit any network policies. Even in that case, you want to have a zero trust policy sometimes, right? So the baseline admin network policy, which is a singleton resource in your cluster, allows you to do that. So let's also come back to our storyline here, right? So we had a pass action admin network policy at priority three, so that's where we left off. Now we are creating another resource, which is the baseline admin network policy. And this is saying, I want to deny everybody from talking to the Forbidden Forest. So this is the default guardrail that Albus Dumbledore is laying down. In case professors don't have any network policies, you don't know, right? They could just delete it for all you know. So you want to have the default guardrail la layer on your cluster. And that is what this shows. But 
still, we still have our admin network policy and the network policies in our cluster at this stage. So right now, the pass action admin network policy is what is taking effect right here in this picture, which is why you still see the arrow being green, which means it's passing it to the allow to forbidden forest network policy in the professor's namespace. So that's what's taking effect right now in this instance. Like I mentioned, what if you delete the network policy, right? What if the professor's namespace has no network policies present? In that case, that's when the baseline admin network policy, fondly known as BANP, kicks in. So now you're going to deny all the egress traffic from everyone to the Forbidden Forest based on the BANP. So it's the point to note, however, is the admin network policy at priority three is still being hit. And then you are passing it. It's just that there's nothing on the network policy layer right now. So you're falling down to the baseline admin network policy. And this is how a sample YAML for a BANP looks like, where you have, like I mentioned, it's a singleton resource. So you can have only one BANP in your cluster. So be wise to define it, right? In our subjects part of the API, we have selected all namespaces in the cluster. And we are saying we are going to deny egress traffic from everyone to the forbidden forest. Let's also look at our part two demo for the BANP on a OVN Kubernetes cluster. So just recapping the whole thing, we have three admin network policies on our cluster right now. We have a network policy in our professor's namespace. And this is how our baseline admin network policy looks like, which I showed on our slides here. And so let's go ahead and create our BANP in the cluster right now. Let's also try to get the BANP to make sure that it got created correctly. So we have our default BANP right there. And now when Minerva McGonagall tries to connect to the Forbidden Forest, she's going to get connected because we have not really, because we have not really had the BANP take effect, right? So there's still the network policy in the professor's namespace that's kicking in. So we have created the baseline and the network policy. But the reason why the connection still works is because you have a network policy in the professor's namespace. However, if you delete that network policy, any pass action that's happening from your admin network policy layer is going to fall down to your third layer, BANP, and that's why the connection doesn't work anymore. So the key takeaways, right? So let me try to recap it. I'm sure that was a lot of information in the short time that we had. If you are a cluster admin persona, please check out our admin network policy and baseline admin network policy resources. And you can clearly see that if you define ANPs, you can either use the pass to interact with your network policies or with your baseline admin network policies if there is no matching network policies, right? And then if you have no admin network policies and no network policies, you can still fall down to your baseline admin network policies. So these are the three layers to keep in mind and the three takeaways of our presentation. Over to Andrew, who will talk about how to get more involved in our project. Yeah, so thanks, Surya. I think this was our first introduction to admin network policy at our main Kube contract. Um, our overarching goal is to you know, consolidate on network policy APIs. Uh, we know in the ecosystem today, many um, CNIs implement their own sort of global network policy or cluster scope network policy. We want to bring it back to the upstream, and we want to make it portable for everyone. So how to get involved. Um, I kind of split it up into a couple different levels here um, because we want everyone. Like, we truly need a lot of help. Um, we've had some exciting new contributors recently, and they're able to kind of hop in and take some big roles. Um, but even before getting involved, if any of you uh, maintain a CNI or know people who maintain a CNI, we want to get the message out there. We want to work together. Um, we have some really exciting new features that are coming in with the Admin Network Policy API that we didn't talk about today. That'll be for another talk um, that kind of make it even more useful. But for getting involved, I've laid out a couple different layers here. You can kind of be completely new, start at some of the generic Kubernetes documentation. Um, you also can be a little bit more advanced with that, um, hop right into our documentation. And even further, if you're sitting here and saying, oh, well, I'm a CNI who has a cluster scope object, and we are implementing a feature that we haven't talked about here, we want to hear that. Like, we want everyone to get involved. We want to in, uh, create new NPEPs, which is kind of our version of a KEP. We've designed it after the Gateway API's GEP and 
it is way less painful than a cap. <laughs> so it should be a lot uh, more enjoyable process to get done, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I think that's all we have today. Thanks so much for coming, and please leave us a review if you'd like to. We'll take some questions now. Hi, um, I don't have a question, but I did just want to let you guys know how much um, I'm looking forward to trying this out. It's going to make my life so much easier, and I just want to tell you guys how much I appreciate your work. Thank you. We appreciate you. That's, that's, what, that's exactly that's what we, we want to hear. Thank you. I'll second that. Um, <laughs> for the baseline, you have a rule in there that says, you know, you can deny or allow or whatever. What's the default from that? So if you say, like, you're forbidden from talking to the forbidden forest, is everything else then allowed? Or does it, you know, how, is, how does that work? If it doesn't hit a rule at baseline, it falls down to the default stance of the Kubernetes cluster, which is always allow today. Um, but what we kind of foresaw baseline as being as a way to kind of flip that, right? So network policy, it's implicit. Whenever you make one, it blocks that pod off in the namespace. We wanted to make everything in this API explicit. So if you want to do that at a cluster scope, you can basically create a baseline admin uh, network policy that says don't allow anything to anything and then developers and admins need to work together to whitelist or allow list um, the things that should be allowed for the cluster to function. Right, so I think the, 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 the major thing is usually the baseline policy is supposed to be used for you know, deny rules. But the, the reason why I allow action is in there is because we have priorities, right? So it's really hard sometimes to you know, make a whole lot of a, a bunch of deny rules where you can now with the based on admin network policy, you can actually stack an allow rule, which is really narrow, and then we have a you know, universal deny everything rule below, and then it will just work as, you know, um, as expected. But uh, it's just a way to, uh, for you to more easily write those kind of policies, so. Yeah, but you, all can, you can only have like one BANP, so you also wanna be a bit careful with how that's defined. Sometimes you can shoot yourself in the foot and, do, and deny everything to everything, so. Yeah, that's also why we don't have priorities on that API, yeah. Or if you have a very nice use case, while well, you may need more than one BNP, reach out to us, we are happy to discuss. Okay, it's not a question. Thanks for the sessions. So I'm part of the, the, the maintenance uh, Andrea project that you saw here. You are invited for the dinner tomorrow. Go and sweet the dinner by on here. Free dinner, free drink, 2216 South Michigan. Jet and Jerry. Two, That's two, awesome. One, six, South Michigan, 4 p.m. tomorrow. You want to hear invited phone dinner and drinks offered by VMware, Binance, and Google. There are three talks. We have a speaker here. He is one of the speakers. We go deep into this. Thank you. We'll talk about admin our policy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. This is uh, actually very good. I think it's very needed. So I had an a question about your earlier comment about uh, user versus uh, uh, admin. So how often do you actually see actual like users, quote users, what, like what scenarios do you see users writing to the Kubernetes API there? Because something I've seen in the industry, and I'd just like to see your, your, just your input on this, is that there are people who talk to the Kubernetes API and then there are the containers running in there. And a lot of people like to force users to be just in the containers and not know anything about Kubernetes. But clearly this is, you, know, you have to know quite a bit about Kubernetes to do it. So I just, as far as that line, I, would, I don't know if you have any inputs or thoughts on it. Hmm? I mean, basically the person making a Helm package, you might consider that a user, right? Because that's what that this is really applying to. But the question is how often, like is there a particular workflows that you've seen where there like more other than that? I mean. I guess because like a lot of the GitLab stuff and you know a bunch of stuff I see out there, it's there's a clear wall between Kubernetes API and the actual applications running in the mm -hmm. cluster. So. I think like that's kind of an interesting case for us as core developers versus what's going on in industry on the ground, right? And and to be honest with you, like we're thinking of it from when we say a developer. Um, it's sometimes lumped in there synonymously with something that you might want to call a namespace administrator, 
right? So someone who's in charge of a namespace and who gives pods or resources to someone who can't talk to the Kubernetes API, right? Does that make, does that clear it up a little yeah, bit? Yeah, that's, that to me, I guess that's kind of like there's one level of cluster admin and then there's maybe some sort of so another level of admin. Right, there's a, like, like, and the personas are, they do, are a bit flexible. And yes. like, if we need to be more clear on that, please, please come talk no, to no, us. And that's, no, I mean. Yeah. No, 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 it's, it's a great question. Idea. Really good question. Yeah, I think a lot of times we have the cluster admins d define our back roles for the namespace resource in general. And then each namespace owners can do their own thing is what, what we actually intended, yeah. Okay, so. This stuff is really cool. Um, what my question revolves around that new priority um, that seems like adding a lot of complexity. Um, first question is, do you foresee that adding uh, quite a bit to uh, what CNI providers have to implement? Do you see issues with having to implement something like that where before it was, hey, I defined one, one set of whitelisted rules in order to evaluate a policy, and now I have a, a chain to filter. So I think today, different CNIs already have their APIs proprietary, and one of the goals that we have is to be able to commonize all of that and be using the Kubernetes native API. So for example, Calico has their own global network policy, CLIM has their own. So today, implementers already have an extra layer, right? And we are actually trying to make it simpler by having just that one API that they have to implement. So almost all CNIs today, like most common ones, have it. As, so. as it pertains to the data plane, it depends, right? Cilium already has priorities. Um, that's one concrete example. Whether it's easier for, oh, sorry, I misspoke. Cal, uh, Calica already has explicit priorities in their global network policy. Is it hard for Cilium to do it? Maybe harder than Calico, but it is on a base, uh, base by basis level. I think the other part of that question is complexity and use, right? It's gonna be tricky, right? We're gonna have more priorities, more objects with different priorities. You as an administrator or even as just a viewer, observability viewer, how do you understand the relationship between those, those um, objects? We actually have kind of a commitment to create some really nice developer tooling along with this API. Um, and we have a cool tool called Cyclonus that we've kind of been building off of in the upstream that gives you a really nice table output view of the relationship and what's going on with your cluster. That's a place we need help. It's gonna be really exciting. I think it's gonna be cool for the whole ecosystem, so. And I think if the concern is on, you know, the priority, the scale of priority, know that right now in the API, it's not unbounded. I, yeah. I think it's like 100, zero to 100 or something. Like, it, we can think of a use case where people will create, you know, 90 different priorities in the cluster already, not to mention like say 10,000. So there's not going to be too much of a data plan churn, in my opinion, um, for most of the CNI implementers. We just want to control it so that people write policy that are actually making sense, right? They're, they're not trying to put every rule in every namespace as a different priority. That just doesn't make any sense, so. And, okay, and I so think it's kind of like, what I've seen in production today is the peripheration of thousands of network policies. Like, Customers are rolling out entire systems just to manage their network policies, and we want to cut that down. Makes One sense. more detail to add to that is that it's a bit of moving the complexity to the implementation from the customers because it seems like it is actually easier for customers to use priorities. They are very used to it. They know how to write their policies in these terms, right? So that's another reason to do that. Um, my second question regarding priority is priority unique um, and if it's not unique how do you handle um, two policies um, that might conflict or do you have to leave space in order to and plan out eventually you know what could be if there's changes and you reorder you might have to reorder all of your priority numbers the um, API today itself is actually if you have, if you define two admin network policies at the same priority, it's undeterministic, the definition. So it's a great question. However, implementations sometimes take over and they do the implementation specific stuff. So the way we did it in the OVN cube CNI is we say that you cannot create two admin network policies at the same priority. We do not support it. If you do it, it's at your own risk. So we call that out. I wanted to add on that. It's only undeterministic if you sort of like step on own toes because 
there are use cases where you have to admin network policy create the same priority, but they're regulating completely different traffic. And that's fine because you know you will never have a conflicting rule with each other. But let's say, you know, because a pod can have uh, 10 labels, right? So if you are writing different labeled rules, which are essentially selecting the same traffic, but one is uh, two at the same priority, one is al allow and one is deny, well, you kind of like step on your own toes. And that will be undeterministic. It really depends on how the implementations choose to write data pass rules for it. But in, in, the, in general, we just, you know, advise against doing that, so. And it's important to remember that, that prior, um, rules are also ordered within a single admin network policy. You can write multiple rules at one priority level and, and they're explicitly prior, prioritized in that single rule. Um, so we hope to avoid that as much as possible and we hope to write you know, really good tooling, really good user documentation to avoid it. Thank you. Thank you. Great questions, by the way. Thanks, everyone. That was awesome. We have the SIG Network Policy API intro and updates talk at 3.15 Central Time tomorrow. So please join us if you want to come and know more the about, link is right about there that. Yes. The QR code. Yes, so. we want contributors and help and a implementations. Lot of cool proposals um, that we are trying to add to the admin now policy. So thanks, everyone. Thanks.